Now I would like to estimate this uh, theta value that we talked about, which is h bar omega over k. Remember, h bar was the reduced Planck's constant and k is Boltzmann constant. So all I need to know is the angular frequency of lattice vibrations. So we would like to estimate uh, this. So from elastic properties of solids, uh, we know that for a solid that is under a pressure, a small pressure uh, delta P, we can write the pressure uh, as being related to the change in the volume by minus B bulk modulus delta V over V. So where does this come from? If you have a solid, uh, let's think about a cubic structure where we apply a pressure, the pressure is going to uh, appear on all sides of the uh, surface. So it's going to be exerted onto all surfaces. And therefore what we will see is that the pressure increase results in a change in the um, a change in the volume so the volume will decrease if we increase the pressure uh, delta p force per area uh, acting on uh, this cube so increasing force per area the pressure uh, decreases volume V. Now uh, because of that when we increase the pressure the volume decreases uh, we have to introduce a minus sign here into this uh, expression and delta P is equal to minus the bulk modulus times the fractional change in volume delta V over uh, V. Uh, or we can write uh, bulk modulus as uh, 1 over uh, kappa uh, and therefore or kappa is equal to 1 over the bulk modulus therefore uh, we can see that the compressibility kappa is equal to minus 1 over the volume delta V over delta P. So B is our bulk modulus and kappa is our compressibility which is 1 over the bulk modulus. So uh, you can see that um, the larger the value of delta V is, it's going to be, delta V is a negative value for increasing pressure, remember, the larger the value of compressibility will be for a given uh, change in uh, the pressure, the outside pressure, delta P. Okay, so uh, we're going to use this uh, relationship for um, the elastic uh, region. So we are assuming that the increase in pressure is not uh, causing a plastic deformation of the solid, it's elastic deformation. Uh, so we are working in the elastic deformation regime where we have this well-defined uh, constant bulk modulus or compressibility uh, And for our model, we're going to assume that we have a simple cubic uh, lattice. So if you look at the uh, surface, uh, your uh, atomic spacing will be equal to A. So we're, we have uh, in a simple cubic lattice, we have one atom per cell one atom per cell. So you can think of this as eight atoms sitting at the uh, 
corners of this tube and one eighth of each atom is going to be inside so one eighth times eight one atom per cell well i can visualize this uh, as uh, one atom that is inside a, a cubic region uh, as you can see here now a is called the lattice spacing interatomic uh, spacing and i would like to know uh, the delta p so the pressure increase that i'm applying to this uh, lattice will be equal to the force that i'm applying divided by the area a so it is force per area and that will be equal to f divided by um, the area occupied by one atom is a squared so it's going to be equal to or it will give me a force per atom as a lattice spacing squared multiplied by the increase in pressure delta p per atom uh, so as a result of um, the increase in pressure we have a change in the volume delta V over V and the volume of a cube is a cube so it's the volume occupied by one atom uh, is a cube so we're looking at the change in a cube it is 3 a square if you take the derivative with respect to a uh, 3a squared delta a divided by a cube so this will be equal to 3 delta a over a then we're going to have force per atom f per atom equal to uh, a squared times uh, delta p which is a squared times um, minus the bulk modulus or 1 over the compressibility delta V over V which is minus A square over kappa 3 delta A over A so this will cancel one of the A's in the numerator so we find that uh, the force per atom is equal to um, minus 3a over kappa times delta a so I call this 3a over kappa as my spring constant so this is my spring constant and you can see that the force is proportional to uh, the displacement so it is minus alpha times delta a and alpha the spring constant is 3a divided by the compressibility so the frequency of vibrations omega is square root alpha divided by m for the simple harmonic motion of these atoms about their equilibrium uh, lattice sites so this will be equal to square root 3a over kappa multiplied by m so i was able to estimate the the angular frequency uh, of uh, lattice vibrations using this um, estimation okay so let's get some numerical values now for copper I would like to estimate the frequency of lattice vibrations the atomic mass is 63.5 grams per mole and the density of copper is 8.65 grams per a centimeter cube and the compressibility of copper that is tabulated 
in CGS units it is 7.3 times 10 to minus 13 centimeter square per dyne of force. So you can see uh, having these values I can calculate M the mass of one copper atom is the atomic mass divided by Avogadro's number so it is 63.5 uh, divided by Avogadro's number 6.02 10 to 23 I find 1.05 times 10 to minus 22 uh, grams uh, So, uh, the density of copper is the mass of one atom divided by the volume it occupies, A cube. So, I find that the lattice spacing can be estimated as M divided by rho to the power one third. So, this will be equal to 1.05 times. 10 to minus 22 grams uh, divided by the density 8.95 grams per centimeter cube to the power one third so this calculation will give me for the lattice spacing 2.34 10 to minus 8 uh, centimeters or 2.34 angstroms now uh, the angular frequency of the oscillations omega will be equal to 3a so 3 times 2.34 10 to minus 8 centimeters divided by um, kappa 7.3 10 to minus 13 in cgs units multiplied by the mass in grams 1.05 10 to minus 22 to the power 1 over 2 and this gives me for omega 3.02 times 10 to 13 radians per second which is 2 pi times the frequency of oscillations so the frequency of lattice vibrations is 4.8 times 10 to 12 Hertz, which is infrared. So the lattice vibrations, vibration frequencies uh, are in the infrared regime. So this allows me to estimate the critical temperature theta uh, with which I compare my absolute temperature to decide if I can use classical approximation. So that's h bar omega over k. This is uh, h bar 1.05 times 10 to minus 27. Um, and omega is 3.02 10 to 13 radians per second. And k is 1.38 times 10 to minus 16. And this gives me roughly for this temperature 230 Kelvin. Now, since room temperature 300 Kelvin is greater than uh, 230 Kelvin, CV can be approximated to be 3R. This is valid. So, Dulong Putty Low can be used for copper. Um, So an important finding I have here is that the frequency of lattice vibrations is in the infrared uh, region and we have uh, an estimation of theta from h bar omega over k to be 230 Kelvin for copper which is less than room temperature. So CV is about 3R at room temperature. So this is a good approximation. Uh, on the other hand, if I go to diamond, so I have done this for uh, copper in this case. Um, so if I try the same calculation for diamond. Uh, 
diamond is carbon, as you know. And for this one, uh, the compressibility of diamond is one third of the compressibility of uh, copper. Uh, the atomic mass this is going to be 12 grams per mole and that is one-fifth of that of copper so we find that um, omega which is square root alpha over m or square root 3a over uh, kappa m kappa is reduced uh, to one-third uh, the mass is reduced to one-fifth uh, the lattice spacing a is not going to be very different so we find that omega so by decreasing kappa and m we're going to increase omega omega will be much higher so angular frequency of oscillations for diamond will be much higher and in fact if you calculate this theta value for diamond it is roughly 830 Kelvin so the classical approximation giving us CV is equal to 3R the long putty law uh, is not valid at room temperature all right so uh, I wanted to numerically estimate the lattice vibration frequency and the corresponding critical temperature with which I compare my absolute temperature to decide if I can use classical approximation. And for this I have used a simple cubic lattice model uh, and in a simple cubic lattice we have atoms at the corners of a cell and one eighth of each atom is inside the cell so we have a total of one atom per cell. Or you can visualize this in two-dimensional surface as one atom uh, that is inside a square um, at the surface. So for a solid under a small pressure delta P, the elastic properties of the solids tell me if you apply additional pressure on a surface, uh, the, the object feeling this pressure from all sides will uh, basically shrink so there will be a decrease in its volume so the increasing pressure is related to the decreasing volume by a constant called the bulk modulus delta p is minus bulk modulus delta v over v or compressibility is defined as one over the bulk modulus so compressibility is minus one over v delta v over delta p and I can estimate the interatomic uh, spacing using the density uh, of the uh, solid and its molecular mass and volume of a cell as we can uh, see in the case of copper. So the applied pressure on the surface, that's the force per area, it, uh, is going to be uh, F divided by a, a square where F is the force I'm applying per atom. So uh, A square is the area occupied by one atom uh, in the cell and uh, so F is equal to A square times delta P and the change in the volume delta V is the volume occupied by one atom is A cube inside the cell so delta A cube over A cube is 3 delta A over A so for the force per atom A square times delta P I have a squared times minus bulk modulus delta v over v or minus 1 over compressibility delta v over v and I find that the force is minus 3a over kappa delta a so 3a over kappa seems to be my spring constant and force is equal to minus alpha delta a change in the interatomic spacing so omega the angular frequency of oscillations for the simple harmonic motion is square root alpha over m so it's square root 3a over kappa m then I have estimated it for copper the mass of one copper atom is atomic mass divided by Avogadro's number density is mass per volume mass of one atom divided by volume occupied by one atom a cube 
So A is mass divided by density to the power one third. And omega I have estimated by substituting the values that I calculated uh, plus the compressibility, the known compressibility of copper. These, these are tabulated, you can find it uh, in many places, including the web. Uh, kappa is 7.3 10 to minus 13 centimeters square per dime. Uh, so uh, this is going to give me for omega 3.02 10 to 13 radians per second or a frequency in the 10 to 12 hertz infrared regime. Uh, so that's basically terahertz regime. Uh, let me note that here. This is terahertz regime. Now the theta, the critical temperature with which I will compare my absolute temperature is h bar omega over k and if this value is 230 Kelvin for copper, room temperature is higher than 230 Kelvin. So this means that the Dulong Petit Low uh, molar specific heat is about 3R is still valid for copper. But if I compare it to diamond, where the compressibility is one-third that of copper and the mass is one-fifth that of copper, the angular frequency of oscillations is much higher. As a result, theta is about 830 Kelvin, which is actually greater than 300 Kelvin. So Dulong Putilo CV is about 3R, is not valid at room temperature for diamond.